Uh, hello, everyone. I want to welcome you to uh, the first of a series of webinars from the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics. Uh, this webinar uh, today is Genetics and Cystic Fibrosis Carrier Screening. Uh, I want to introduce the program and the participants and give you a sense of what the various modules of this uh, webinar are going to cover. We have five outstanding speakers uh, who are all experts in this topic. There's a fairly long history of cystic fibrosis carries, carrier screening in the United States. Actually, it goes back to prior to the cloning of the gene itself in 1999. Uh, but at the time the gene was available, uh, it really enabled molecular testing for CF carrier screening. And uh, at the early days, it was offered as part of prenatal clinical services. Uh, however, by 1997, uh, the NIH held a consensus conference that recommended that CF carrier screening be offered to the uh, population of preconceptional and conceptional uh, couples. Uh, at that time, it was clear that there was a need for educational materials to support such a screening program, and that we had not yet standardized what a mutation panel for cystic fibrosis carrier screening might look like. So over the next two years after that recommendation, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, the American College of Medical Genetics, and the National Human Genome Research Institute partnered in developing many of the resources that were going to support our ability to deliver a carrier screening program of this type. Uh, more recently on that historical line, uh, the CFTR2 project that is a project funded by the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation has made a significant inroads in establishing the genotype-phenotype correlations of different variants with cystic fibrosis and has done a lot of work in establishing the functional validity of a number of the variants in this particular gene. Uh, there are resources available that many of our speakers will make you aware of today. Those educational materials you can see here are available uh, through multiple resources and will be referenced later by another speaker. Uh, the ACMG itself has also been very active in establishing guidelines. Uh, 1997 publication from ACMG that described the variants that seemed appropriate at that time for carrier screening. Uh, we revisited that panel in 2004 and actually identified a single variant that needed to be removed from the list based on knowledge acquired from widespread carrier screening in the general population where we had much less biased information about what variants uh, and, uh, were present in the CFTR gene and how common they were. Now I want to introduce you to the program today. Uh, we have five uh, outstanding speakers, all experts in their, their fields and, and the aspects of cystic fibrosis and carrier screening that they'll discuss on this program. Uh, first up will be Dr. Anthony Gregg, uh, who will discuss the changing paradigms in prenatal genetics uh, and focus on cystic fibrosis carrier screening. We'll then look, uh, hear from Dr. John Clancy, who will discuss the genetics of cystic fibrosis discussing CF, the CFTR gene itself, and many of the novel therapeutics that are coming out for cystic fibrosis, uh, which is an issue many couples have to consider when pondering whether or not carrier screening is appropriate for them. Uh, we'll then discuss laboratory testing for CFTR variants by uh, Dr. Wayne Grody. Uh, following Dr. Grody, we'll hear from uh, Karen ciclosi Rari who will discuss genetic counseling for cystic fibrosis and provide more information uh, that's been gleaned from the CFTR2 project. And finally, we'll wrap up with a series of case-based scenarios uh, that try to tie together much of what has been taught during the course of the prior talks and loop them into a case-based scenario to help you better understand sort of the frontline activity that takes place. That will be delivered by Dr. Bruce Korf. These are all CME awarding programs. Uh, but they are freely available for viewing. There is a small fee associated with those wishing to obtain a CME certificate uh, for the programs. Please be sure to fill out the program evaluation form that comes with the CME component because it's required to document the impact on practice that this educational program has made on your practice. Uh, we'll also be coming back to you in about six months after the CME event has occurred um, when we will email you with a brief summary of the webinar and a case-based vignette. Um, based on that vignette, we'll ask a few questions that will allow you to uh, provide answers and for us to monitor whether there's been a long-term impact of this educational program on your acquired knowledge.